Now, company headquarters has given you the okay to go through a personnel decontamination station. That means you're going to get a chance to get out of your contaminated gear, shower, shave, and rest for a while. Then, you will put on fresh protective clothing and be ready to return to the mission. Your squad's destination is a personnel decontamination station, or PDS. It is being run by a decontamination squad from the division's NBC Defense Company. A member of this squad is now guiding the APC to the PDS. He is making sure that the APC approaches from the downwind side so that no contamination will be blown towards the decontamination station. A typical personnel decontamination station looks like this. This illustration shows 12 stations of a PDS and details the procedures to be followed at each station. Under field conditions, the PDS would be placed where cover and concealment is available, such as in a wooded area, or in arctic climates and cold weather inside buildings, or in other cases, inside a large tent or a series of tents. But in all cases, the procedures are essentially the same. At the first station, you decontaminate your weapon and combat gear and it is then transported to the reissue point. Then, you move up through the PDS, going through the procedure one step at a time. After having decontaminated your combat gear, you go through a shuffle pit, accomplish a first scrub down for your masks and hoods. Get rid of your overgarments. Discard your gloves, fatigues, underwear and socks. Take a shower here and do a second wash for the masks and hoods. Then go to the reissue point for clean clothing and to reclaim your boots and personal gear. Station 12 provides medical aid if needed. Now, let's go through those procedures in detail. The decontamination unit has laid out the PDS so that you approach it with the wind blowing in your face, carrying any contamination away from the PDS. At the first position, you take off all your personally issued items, such as web gear, weapon, and helmet. Here, you will completely decontaminate your personal items by dunking each item into a slurry mixture, soaking it thoroughly, and then rinsing it in clear water. Next, you go through a shuffle pit for decontaminating any liquid chemical agents that may be on your overboots. Although you will be discarding the overboots, any small cracks or holes in them could have allowed chemical agents to pass through. This shuffle pit helps protect the boots underneath. Also at the shuffle pit, using a soft cloth, wash the mask and hood, but stay in the shuffle pit so that any contaminated waste goes into the pit. Help each other do a complete scrub down of your masks, hoods, and gloves. Masks are kept on until the very last step. This protects you from inhaling any fumes given off by chemical agents still on your clothing. Note that all contaminated water from the scrub down area is neutralized in the shuffle pit. Do a good job you'll be wearing this same mask and hood later on. The next position is where you discard the overboots. A new set will be issued to you at the end of the line. Now, your combat boots are given a very careful scrub down. So let's go ahead and scrub those things down thoroughly.
<clears throat> take him down here to rinse him. Let's keep the line moving here. This is followed by a clean water rinse to make sure the boots are completely decontaminated. This is important because, like the mask and hood, you'll be wearing the same boots later on. Next, you sit on a bench and remove the boots. However, this must be done in a specific way to keep your feet clear of any contaminants that may have washed off onto the ground. One boot comes off and the foot is swung over to the other side of the bench without touching the ground. You do the same with your other foot. The idea is always to keep contaminated objects on one side of the bench, on the downwind side, and yourself on the clean side. Okay, go ahead and remove the overgarment, remove the flight jacket, and hand it to me. Then you remove the overgarments. There is a special way of doing this so that the outside that has been contaminated stays away from your skin. They are placed in containers provided by the decon team. Up to now, you have kept your gloves on, and although they were washed earlier, they could have retained or picked up some contaminants. So either roll or shake the gloves off your hands to keep the outsides from touching the skin. The gloves go into a container provided for this purpose. Remember, throughout the entire decontamination process, Members of the PDS squad are there to help you and guide you through every step of the procedure. For example, one thing that must be done at this stage is to take any personal possessions, like a watch or a wallet, and place them in a pouch provided for this. The pouch will be secured, and these items return to you later on. Now, as you approach the showers, it's time to take off your fatigues, underwear, and socks. Take off the top part of the fatigues first. It goes into the designated container. The bottoms come next. Naturally, if the weather were hot, you might not be wearing fatigues. Or in winter and in cold climates, the entire PDS line would be inside a building or a heated tent. Your shorts must also come off here and go into the container. The socks are last. Remember, fatigue top fatigue bottom, shorts, and socks, in that order. Finally, just in front of the showers, a member of the PDS squad removes your t-shirt by cutting it up the back. Peel off the parts, throw them into a container, then enter the shower, still in your mask and hood. In the shower, the mask and hood must be carefully rinsed. You do this while holding your hands over the inlet valves to keep water from entering into the air purifying system. Now, after you've done this, take a deep breath. Then remove the mask and hood. These are hung on hooks mounted at one side of the shower section. What a relief! and it's great to be able to talk in a normal manner again. You need to scrub your body with plenty of soap. Pay particular attention to those areas where hair grows. This is where small amounts of a contaminating agent are most easily collected. After you have dried off, you pick up your mask and hood. Remember, once you come out of the PDS line at this end, you are decontaminated and clean. You cannot wander off or associate with any new men coming into the PDS to start the decontamination process. After the showers, the next step is where you are issued fresh clothing. 
underwear, and if the weather is cold enough, fatigues.